Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our Choose to Lose campaign where we're trying to beat the game on the highest difficulty with less soldier options, less equipment options, less hit points and stronger enemies with ABA and ABC. It's time for Operation Black a Glove and a Sabotage of an Alien Facility plus the good old Berserker Queen is upon us. It will be one of the last missions, if not the last mission, where we're essentially um, using all of that equipment on the second team. I mentioned in uh, several videos beforehand that I came to the conclusion in order to really make it more niche, we're going to lock in the main equipment with all of the nice toys uh, to the prime team. We're going to see that whenever we're fighting against the Chosen or um, let's say an uh, alien ruler, so those types of infiltrations that we're currently doing. Uh, would be covered by it, but uh, the second team will only get the less desirable options. I very much realize that even in the non S tier um, uh, set of equipment, like S tier being mind shields, blue screen rounds, and mimic beacons, there is still um, a pretty wide difference between good items like Hasmus Vest. Uh, like AP rounds and uh, like the frost bomb for instance in yeah not so good items so what we want to see are the not so good items and that might even lead to catastrophic situations where some of uh, the soldiers will die eventually and if if I can, uh, can uh, prevent it I would like the main team not to be in that situation so we're going to train those guys up and keep them nice and safe and we're going to use the secondary and tertiary team in order to have some fun let's go good we landed and hopefully this is going to be one of those safer missions you never know there might be something there might be something that we have not expected but we got a nice little scout here with Sandman. So I'm fairly confident that that we will at least know what's happening. Got some high ground here. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. Got some high ground there, which looks great as well. And just for the time being, let's position ourselves here. Primo says a mech should take the high ground as well. Toxic takes the front line. Zirkim is still concealed, so might as well give him the front line position. And if we play our cards right, we might end up with catching a couple of their patrols of guard, which is really what I would want to do. Essentially killing them without expending too much of our uh, valuable cooldowns. Oh, I'm hearing a sec, I think I hear a sectopod. All right. We got some towers. We got some towers, super heavy towers to be precise. We really want to haywire them. I think currently we do not need to do that. It would be a bit extravagant to do that. What we can do though is we can start to at least hit them. This here is a no regret move. tower can't help itself so we, we we can remove it without being in trouble ourselves moving forward sukuger moves forward as well I mean, we could kill it, but what's the point? We can uh, always use another turn with a sniper. That is why I want to make my way over here and eventually take the high ground.
Yeah, I'm I'm seeing kind of that stomping motion, which is an indicator that a sectopod is somewhere near. We're going to continue with a super heavy tower, potentially, yes. I mean, we could also put a nice little kill zone down. Question is, are they uh, moving in far enough to justify that? The answer is potentially not. Maybe next turn. So let's drop the high ground and we're instead just going to overwatch we will block the entrance for them there is another patrol okay and they might be running into us if they do we're getting a few overwatch shots out of it Ooh, the tension rises. Somehow the game sound doesn't fully work. Let me just fix that, uh, fix that real quick. Okay, back, finally. I mean, there's a wonderful tune playing in the background, the XCOM tune. And I figured it would be a waste if you guys cannot hear that, right? Good. Free reload, because I want uh, to use kill zone. And the question of the day is, could we hit all of them? Potentially not. Can we still use the Claymore? Potentially yes. It would shred both of them. <laughs> we can't. We can't hit the Claymore. What a joke. Love it. Okay, well, if we want to use the claymore, we got to take uh, the shot here. Not optimal, but overall the better solution. There we go, that's what I was planning to do. That's oh, one hit, fantastic, come on. I used quite a bit of uh, resources in order to do that, so I want to see a few hits. There we go. Like I mentioned, I, did not, I do not want to use too many resources, which is why we're using kind of low priority topics such as the claymores. Hundred percent and a hundred percent. Okay, cool, good. Well I mean let's start with the obvious. Uh, we don't want to use Comet Protocol. We could do that in order to kill the guy, but like I said, I want to save most of our most of our cooldowns moving up and let's try to nail that priest fantastic good he's in sustenance moving up Time for that Guardian to go down. Still up. Apparently not. 
I don't want to lose concealment. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to move up. And we're going to use overdrive. That is a cooldown which is going to come back soon-ish. So far we've only used the claymore in order to shred these guys. There's one down. And that's hopefully the second kill. We could go for a teamwork and finish it. I don't think that that is necessary though. I'd rather risk taking a shot. This guy is like what? An advanced guardian? <sighs> Suboptimal. I don't want to already use teamwork, but I also don't want to take damage or lose concealment. Teamwork is worth less than the uh, gains that we. <laughs> okay. Teamwork uh, is, is worth less than concealment. I really want to uh, keep the scout. We're being punished with stasis. He only has one turn, so stasis is all he can do. And I think movement is the only thing that he could do. Okay, cool. Well, that's unfortunate. All right, let's get all of our uh, moderate or bad hits out of the way right uh, right now, right here. This is 100% this is kill. Fantastic. Moving over. Time for some grappling. Second free reload. And let's go into concealment. Fantastic. Good. Roger that. Oak says I am Wonderful. Oh, hello. Of all the aliens running around out there these days, she just had to modify a berserker. Okay, we don't want the Berserker Queen to come up, so we're go going to block that entrance. And we really want to prepare before we're, before we're uh, meeting her. Killing or fighting her now would be an absolute disaster. Ready to engage. That's why we're not going to do it. We're going to reconceal Sirkim. As he's going to be... As he's going to be um, getting a, a bonus to hit from that. We're not uh, going to attack that thing right away. But what we could do is we have our protocol and get the turret. We could get two shots off of it. 40% chance. Fantastic. Okay. Good. In terms of dealing with the queen. Let's just move up. In case she really moves into our direction. What we want to have is kind of a really, really solid overwatch uh, scenario. I 
I could move all the way up to here because we're currently concealed. Good to go. That's a good idea. Okay, so far so good. Right, the Berserker Queen does not know where we are. Technically, she would not run into our direction. We've got a chance to take this thing down once and for all, Commander. Let's get it done. Okay, good. The target is marked. Let's hope those guys are staying out of our fight. I don't need an extra pack. Good, so in terms of Berserker Queen, how do we want to shred her? What would be a great option? Well, what we certainly could do is we could try to hit her. That would not shred her though. She's not dealing that much damage against the highly armored target, so I think the tower will be able to kind of withstand one of her uh, one of her attacks. And those guys are still far enough away to not matter. Heading to that location. Okay, cool. So far, so good. I mean, we could attack, but that would be suicidal because I don't want to trigger either of these additional packs. We're currently just in the process of scouting here and blocking that high ground. Sukugur. We could hit her for four points of damage. I'm not sure if that is triggering a uh, ruler reaction from her. Maybe, maybe not. Final. But since we're so far away, I technically should not. Okay, Overwatch with Primus, Overwatch with Toxic. Jessica Rabbit, still, I think, too far away. Let's hear a squad side. Do we have a squad side penalty? Yes, it's still in squad side direction. So, technically, the Berserker Queen should not be allowed to react to it. We're overwatching here. Super Heavy Turret does not do anything yet. And let's try to hit her. And hit her really well. 66% for quite a bit of damage. Or do we want to scale it down and and hit her with a 90% chance? Hmm, that's three additional damage. I think we're going to take the more likely hit. Okay, fair enough. It triggers a ruler reaction. Which is really unfortunate, to be honest. Tower is shut down. Okay, cool. Well. We're continuing to damage her. Okay, so far, she's not doing so hot. She's tried to deal with uh, the tower, but failed to do that. Let's continue to annoy her.
No shredding needed so far. There we go. Like I said, she has problems dealing with super heavy towers. Overwatching, reload Overwatch, Overwatch, super heavy turret, can go into Overwatch in a second. We're going to use the second combat protocol. Hmm. Potentially not the worst decision. But also say, well, we still have a sector pod, so... At least I think that I've heard a sector port. We're going to Overwatch. There is a miss. The Overwatch somehow did not trigger. Okay. Good. So the Berserker Queen still is going to take some damage. I don't like the fact that she's having full armor but on the flip side she's not attacking us she's only attacking that tower which for all I'm concerned she can do all year long I really don't mind We're going to give her the first target. And while she is trying to scare us, we're simply not giving a fuck. Instead, let's try to hit her. Nicely shredding her. There we go. Tries to summon a gate. Okay, cool. If we freeze her, does that prevent her from fleeing? I wonder. Can't reach her with a fr uh, freezing grenade. What we can do is... We could hit her with a throwing axe. Or we're just accepting that she's going to flee. These hands are a bit clumsy. Free reload. The other option that we could do is we could explode that entire thing. And then she cannot reach uh, because she's going to fall down. Falling damage on top of it. She's here. She can't reach the portal because she can't jump through that. Let's try that just for the sake of of um, finding that incredibly funny. Never, I've never really tried that. This will kill our tu uh, turret, but I don't mind. <laughs> she falls down. Don't tell me that she can now jump out. Oh shit, she can jump out. Well, screw you, XCOM engine, who conveniently placed a traversable... Well, I mean, she, she traversed over full cover here. Maybe through half cover here. Still, screw you, XCOM, for allowing her to flee. Well, that was round number one against the alien queen. A bit of scouting and a tower that really um, tanked her quite well was enough to deal with that menace of society.
Time to deal with the second super heavy tower. And we've already seen that there is another patrol coming, like, right around here. So we're eventually going to get that patrol. Gen four. And there's even one more patrol. Interesting. Moving over here. That way we have marked them. Overwatch, Overwatch. Moving in without triggering them and Overwatch. All right, cool. If they move in, they would deeply, deeply regret it. Good, back onto the high ground here. Trying to kill that super heavy turret. 90% shot missed, unfortunately. Overwatch, 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 and more rinse and repeat. That other pack is slowly but surely creeping up. Let's finish the turret. There we go. Thank God for anti-armor rounds, AP rounds, armor penetrating ones. Good. Eventually, though, uh, those guys will trigger next turn, which is fine. So what we're going to do is reload and kill zone. Oh, it's just reload and Overwatch. Okay, cool. They will run into us, and no, they're not. Come on, I just want to have a nice little over, uh, overwatch trap. Is that so much to ask for? Scanning. My watch begins. This unit's scanning. Moving to overwatch. Okay. Well. For starters. We are kill zoning. Uh, Moving into full okay. cover, that should trigger them. Lighting reflexes prevents one of the hits. However, I am assuming that we will get off two shots. I assumed completely incorrect. And lightning reflex is not even triggered. Elite Spectre. That's a threatening enemy. But no need to use any of our items. We can simply overdrive, use normal cooldowns, and get them down. The sector itself should really not be a big problem. Great to see that they still dodge almost all of the shots. Fantastic. Okay, moving up. Overwatch. Overwatch. Building that nice little fire line down there. Another Overwatch. And the sector potentially should trigger. Unless, of course, it is just overwatching. Opening the door. Menace one five. You're near the target position. 
there is something back here something big can we hit that something with a sniper rifle is the question maybe grappling, grappling into a better position the odds might be low no we can't okay Pretty sure the sector pot is here. Look at that. Destruction. So something big came through. Destruction here. Oh, it's very likely the sector pot. Good. I do have an idea. It's a bit of a. Uh, an interesting line of sign manipulation play. Sector must die. <laughs> Fantastic. We're being revealed. And that's okay because we're just closing the door. Ta da! So Cougar moves up. Primus here begins to move up as well, and we're taking the high ground right up here. What I'm hoping to get from that is a better position and essentially deal with that last patrol right there. Gotta love the sparks because they just can't take any... Uh, any terrain and traverse up there, even without a grappling hook. Alright, moving up. This should not trigger, hopefully. Okay, very good. Does not. So Cougar moves up. Toxic moves closer as well. Let's make sure that these guys cannot move up here. And Zirkim takes a cover position as well. Overwatch, 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 and Overwatch, plus Overwatch. Reload, normal overwatch, and we're good. There we go. That marks him well. Unfortunately, missed with the shotgun. There we go, let's nail him. Fantastic. An efficient kill. That indeed has been an efficient kill. Love it. Okay, cool. Well, Toxic moves up. Starts to mark this guy. And Primos reloads and then hopefully kills him. Good. That's another opening. Maybe one that we've been waiting for, who knows? Order, Good, moving up. Jessica overwatches. I think Zirkim has a really strong position here, just in case we're ever opening the door.
Okay. And <clears throat> there is potentially something something here. No one will follow us. I would say maybe behind the wall. Let's just double check. I would without knowing it, my guess is sector port plus three advent. Sectopod, to Advent, and a mech. <laughs> and they are hiding exactly where I thought they would hide. These little buggers. On a positive note, hypothetically speaking, if we were to frost bomb. If we were to frost bomb, we could, we maybe could end the encounter right away. Who knows? Rolling. To be honest, I think we're better off if Toxic is moving over here. to be caught so how about we're positioning ourselves like over here that seems like a very appropriate position where they won't spot us out overwatch How do we deal with that opening? It leads to a set of stairs. I'll comply for now. Good. Overwatch. And overwatch. We're not expecting them to move. But this should not trigger anything. Because it has not before. We were to place a nice little frost grenade somewhere in there. That's one option. The other option, of course, is to just blow that whole thing up. That'll, that'll be a double whammy. Fortunately, our teamwork is already gone. Is there a way to lob a grenade in without being seen? This here would be a nice angle, but unfortunately we would be seen at some point. Put stand here. That might be the solution. All right, closing door. We're green to go. Well, the the reason why I'm so. trying so hard to to do this the right way is a well placed grenade would essentially help us to solve that entire encounter. Where and how could we kill zone? I mean, we could get in here and then essentially kill zone, but wow, that would be super dangerous. No, 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 no. I think moving over here might be the right yeah there's a lot of vision blockage here we could also stand right here 
Why not? It's a bit aggressive, but kill zone still should work. Uh, the mech positions itself here. That way we can just jump up next turn. And use the high ground to our advantage. Unlike the rest of you, this unit doesn't get winded. And Zukuber moves over here. Good. Okay, so I do have a plan. We just need to correctly deal with it. Opening the door. Kill zone, overwatch. This here would trigger, this would not trigger. I wonder, are we going to have the right angles for a nice frost bomb? We can get three. We can get three, which is not bad. I think we're going to start the encounter with exactly that. Frost bomb against the sector pod is not the wisest choice, but it'll make sure that both of the others are being well covered. Good. Now all we need is a really nice explosion. Fifty percent to get spotted out, but that is okay. Okay, good. Unfortunately, kill zone this time didn't work out as planned. I still think we're good to go. Primus begins to move in. I'd like to get some high ground, but I think we cannot see anything from here. Nah, can't even really uh, select the fields. No, those fields up here are not selectable. Well, too bad. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Good. Moving up. Overdrive. Time to deal with the mech. Zirkin begins to move up and let's start dealing damage. Time to hit that heavy mech. There we go. Some decent starter damage, and that should be a kill. Alright, now it's time to go for the sector port, like I mentioned beforehand. This thing is massive. And any form of protection that we could get 
against it would be helpful. Eight protocol. Helps us to deal um, with cover for uh, Primos. At the same time, we're dealing damage with Zirkin. Good. It's trying to Lightning Field. That's one action, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I did not lose an action. I we had that uh, uh, debate in um, in one of the Saving Your Disaster campaigns, and I just so happened to realize how uh, the sector port really never loses an action. Good. We're compromised, but we're still fine. If you look at it, we shredded the guy. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Primus needs to reload. Okay. We theoretically still have Frostbite ready to go. We just get it down to one HP. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Well, in that case, how about we're just using Comet Protocol? Can't think of a better option, anyways. The Wrath Cannon should not go off. There we go. And we're using Bombard in order to soften these guys up. Uh, I guess that'll be okay. Good, they are the last pack. And as in typical last pack standing fashion, we're going to use our remaining equipment on them. Volatile Mix nicely opens up the corridor. Hundred percent, ninety percent. Moving as close as possible to them without uh, risking anything, and the Elite Lancer needs to go. Could have also uh, tried to kill him and with the explosion uh, gotten the Elite Lancer down. It said tactical analysis, but that was potentially from the last round. As clearly he could uh, move and shoot. Grapple into a hit. And that is that. Death from above into reload. Good, we're planting the C4, and I think that that's pretty much it. We dealt with that nasty sector port pack. Superior scope, that's fantastic. Let's get everybody to the evac zone. Ooh, okay, so uh, that was a reasonably difficult mission. Good. End of turn. There are still aliens here, interestingly enough. Maybe a turret somewhere. 
We don't need to fight against the reinforcements. I think so far we're, we've done quite well. It's maybe even a flawless mission, so why would we want to risk anything for just a tiny bit of XP? That sector port pack was not to be trifled with. Sector port, heavy mag, and two pretty beefy enemies. Well, that's a hundred ish hit points, and you still can't freeze that sector port. And to be fair, the sector port even defied technical analysis. We've, uh, we've frozen it, it said one action loss and technical analysis. So, technically, uh, technically, it could have only done one thing, and I think it took three actions lightning field move wrath cannon with the alien facility destroyed minus four plus delay that is fantastic one thing that we haven't gotten is the berserker queen but we at least shredded it completely so there we go the avatar project is well in place again grenade and ammunition that's a good one didn't we also have Elarium and Alloys? Yeah, that's exactly what we needed. So let's get that next because soon we're going to get additional income and with the Alloys and the Elarium, we, so uh, we should be fine. An engineer just had been an injured. We don't have any more time to lose. Okay, well. We don't want the, uh, the healing to take any longer. There we go. And apparently there is no rest for the wicked. Protect the device. That's not going to happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? I just realized Vigilance, the one that I wanted to counter the last time was a protect the device mission and i was like i'm quoting myself um, from memories but i was like yeah it can't be worse well it can be as bad as and it is just as bad as very difficult protect the device uh, mission for vigilance plus large number of advent troopers yeah no thank you more explosives or a hidden event uh, are we going to go and um, and do a protect the device mission dude I just prior to month end we still had a couple of days I, w I wanted to get the chosen let's take a look how the things are currently playing out prime team ready ready still a couple of days I wanted to wait those before um, before infiltrating the chosen. Three more days until we get the dodge, and Jessica is currently tired. Well, that sucks, but it is what it is. Um, we could still take her onto the chosen mission, and Primos being wounded uh, could definitely also be on on that mission. Although that uh, Primus is is wounded, but nonetheless, it, it would work out. So we would have the Prime team available in five days from now to actually fight the Chosen. Jessica would potentially uh, take a loss in morale. What is the Chosen doing this round? Let's just double check that because maybe we don't need to immediately invade her and we can wait until next turn. Retribution... So that's an economical crackdown. Next next time she will start the hunt. So yeah, beginning of next uh, uh, beginning of next month we will need to infiltrate her. Twelve more days under powered armor. I mean, one could make the argument that we're essentially going for powered armor and then uh, infiltrate her. Who knows? I mean, that uh, you you could do it. You could also go in five days. I think that that's a perfectly reasonable assumption as well. We have a couple of weapons that we could upgrade. 
if we had the resources, such as the beam cannon, which definitely uh, after month end would be a nice contender for an upgrade. Our uh, shadow keeper also would be good. Yeah, but we're in okay spot. We we could do it anyway. So who is going to be team number two? At this point, we have a couple of uh, people that are tired. We got negative trade recovery. If possible, I would not want to interrupt it. So what do we got? We got pr uh, Primus, we got uh, Sniper, we got Toxic. So then who's going to be our Ranger? Jeranx could be our Ranger. And who's going to be the Specialist Hung? Well, I mean, hmm. It's not that bad. Uh, it's a low-level team, but we we could pull it off, right? And I might uh, use that team as an example for not freeing up all of the tools, but essentially using some niche items, whatever is left over. So that could work in our favor. Cool. Yeah, we got uh, the next mission. I will potentially not do the Protect the Device mission but rather some other missions. What could we build? Skulljack, we have zero cores. I wish we had some because then we can build at least some experimental armor. And since that is instant, that actually would be nice. Okay. That brings us to the end of uh, today's episode. Still a lot of action in November. And I hope you enjoy the content. If that's the case, leave a comment and a like down below and see you in two days. Bye bye, guys.